In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice working with combinations. Remember, combinations has to do with choosing objects where you don't care about the order or the arrangement of them. Example A says evaluate 7C2. So what this means is we're choosing two objects from a set of seven. And the way we're going to do this is using our formula. So 7C2 is calculated by first thinking about 7P2 and then dividing by 2 factorial. Now 7P2 is 7 times 6 and 2 factorial is just 2 times 1 which is just 2. So we're going to do 7 times 6 and then divide by 2. And we get 21. Now keep in mind another way that you might have thought about this is instead of thinking 7p2, you could have done 7 factorial over the 2 factorial, that's the same as right here, and then 7 minus 2 factorial. Remember that if you do it this way, 7 factorial divided by 7 minus 2 factorial is the same thing as 7p2 and works out to be 7 times 6. The reason is if we multiply or write it all out, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and then we have 2 times 1, and 7 minus 2 is 5, so 5 factorial will just be this. Notice that this 5 factorial part is on the top and the bottom, so it cancels each other out. And we're left with 7 times 6 divided by 2, which is what we had right there. So either way, you're going to get the same answer. It just depends on how you prefer to think about it. Example B says, in how many ways can three desserts be chosen in any order from the menu of 10? So we have 10 desserts to choose from, and we're choosing three from those 10. And the order doesn't matter. We're just going to choose three to have and eat. So in order to calculate this, let's do it the second way that I talked about in example A. So we'll do 10 factorial over 3 factorial, and then times that by 10 minus 3 factorial. Okay. So remember, 10 minus 3 factorial is just like 7 factorial. So we can rewrite it like this. And at this point, you can expand it out. Once you've done that, notice that we have a 7 factorial that's the same on the top and the bottom. And now we're just dealing with 10 times 9 times 8 divided by 3 times 2 times 1, which just ends up being 120. All right, let's look at example C. There are 12 boys and 14 girls in Mrs. Cameron's math class. Find the number of ways Mrs. Cameron can select a team of three students from the class to work on a group project. The team must consist of two girls and one boy. So for this problem, we're going to think about it as two different pieces. First, we can think about choosing the two girls from the set of 14, and then we'll think about choosing the one boy from the set of 12. We'll calculate the number of ways to do each of those and then multiply them. So for the girls, there are 14 girls and we're choosing two. So the number of ways to do that would be 14C2. For the boys, there are 12 boys and we're choosing one. So there'd be 12 C1 ways to do that. Now all we need to do is calculate or compute each of these numbers and multiply them together. The number of ways to choose the two girls times the number of ways to choose the two boys. For the girls, we're going to have 14 P2 divided by two factorial which is 14 times 13 divided by 2, because 2 factorial is just 2 times 1, which is 2, which gives us 91. For the boys, we'll have 12 P1 over 1 factorial. 12 P1 is just 12, and 1 factorial is just 1, so our answer is just 12. 
there are only 12 ways to choose one boy, which should make sense because there's 12 boys, there's only 12 ways to choose one. So now to figure out our final answer, we just multiply these two together. So the total number of choices for the three people is 91 times 12, which is 1,092.